Hey guys, it's Max Illingworth here, and I'd like to ask you to raise your hand if you like computer games. Yeah, I thought you would like computer games, but actually I don't necessarily mean the sort of video games as such, but I'm actually referring more to engine games played between chess engines. And I really like these games because they show very nicely a, a high quality of chess, and can serve as a good model example for how to play a particular type of position. And one that I noticed from this TCC uh, engine final tournament is this one between Komodo and Chiron, uh, two of the strongest chess engines in the world. And I think we can learn quite a bit from seeing uh, some of the ideas that took place in this game. So without further ado, let's see how the game went. Uh, so we had D4, D5, so, okay, this is why my fields of expertise, the Queen's Gambit. I had E6. So these are all our book moves already. These were set uh, beforehand. Uh, so that's why, for example, White didn't play uh, C takes D5, uh, the exchange variation, because it was set to play Bishop to G5. Uh, so Bishop E7. And this line's not considered to be so dangerous these days. But it's interesting to see how the the computers interpret some of these old school variations as well, uh, where nowadays you will usually see black play r8-6 uh, in this sort of position, uh, and if bishop h4 you have a choice between the, the Lasker variation uh, or Kramnik's knight bd7 is uh, another approach, playing for the c5 break. Uh, one of these days I'll figure out how to do right hand arrows on chess 24, uh, right click arrows I should say. Or there's the b6, the Tartakawa, where you put your bishop on b7 and unite on d7 and develop normally that way. But the computers were set to play uh, this position after knight d7. And, uh, well, for those of you who are very old school players, you may recognise this as being a very popular position from the uh, 20th century, where this was almost the main line of chess back in the 1920s and 1930s. So we had rook to c1, b6, and these are all still book moves, by the way. Uh, so c takes d5, e takes d5, and finally here the engines are left on their own resources in this position where, well, we can say that they're both sides, uh, you know, have some unusual features in this uh, Carlsbad structure, in that perhaps white normally wouldn't commit the rook on c1, as opposed to playing bishop d3. On the other hand, the bishop already has a nice diagonal on uh, on c8, and so sort of playing b6 and bishop d7 does leave the bishop a bit shut in. So it's kind of interesting to see you know, how this uh, position can play out. But at this point, I would say that white is probably a little bit better, just because I'm not sure if black sap is really uh, active enough at this point. Uh, we're actually at this point, both computers were, uh, were also giving this view that white should have a small edge here. Because if you think about after castles, if you play a move such as c5, it's all well and good to put some pressure on white's center. But okay, what do you think might be a, a good move for white in reply? So in fairness, there's actually a lot of decent options for white. Uh, the first moves that come to my mind are, for example, queen c2, trying to get some battery along the diagonal like this. You might also put the queen on e2 as another possible square. More incisive players might be looking at a move such as knight e5 and trying to support some f4 Pillsbury attack or something. I'm not so sure about knight e5 here just because maybe black can, for example, take e5 and have takes and maybe knight d7 can also uh, allow black to pressure this pawn. Or maybe a better move than uh, knight d 7 actually would probably be knight to e4. Just so sort of keeping that bishop sort of shut out. And also if white were to, to take, for example, we would see that that e-pawn would become a bit of a target, which is uh, not so ideal for white. So, therefore, yeah, I think if you want to play knight e5, it's better to play some preparatory moves like queen c2 and rook d1 and only then go for your knight e5 idea. And if they play c4, well, that does make it a bit more easy to get in knight e5 and maybe to play for a central play of e4 before they get their b5, b4 uh, queenside counterplay in. So in principle, I'd be quite happy to see c4 
and probably Black should just build up with moves such as, uh, say, Rook C8 and uh, Rook E8, for example. Maybe Rook E8 is a, is a more flexible uh, waiting move. But yeah, my feeling is White is probably a bit better in this sort of position. Due to the misplaced B7 Bishop. So anyway, the game saw 94, where Black is trying to solve some of his problems uh, with a lack of space by trading some pieces. But Komodo just said no thanks with bishop to f4. Uh, black played c5. And queen c2 I think is even more natural here than before. Because black side has a question of uh, how he's going to defend the knight on e4 in this position. And uh, moves such as f5 I think don't make a, uh, a very good impression to me. Uh, just because you are weakening your king a little bit in the long term. You play moves such as f5. More solid move is knight df6. But it also gives white room to go knight e5 and maybe try and get some initiative that way. Um, or for that matter, you can even just play rook d1 and probably just build up like this. Um, so in any case, knight df6 is actually what uh, what Komodo was expecting. Uh, it's saying that dc5 is, is a way to play. Uh, probably the reason for that is... Uh, not quite sure what the reasoning is, but probably it's that after... D take, B take, C5 that uh, you can sort of damage their, their pawn structure accordingly. Say Rook D1 and, you know, in this sort of position I guess you could say White is quite a bit better. Uh, because of the uh, the Knight coming into C4 and so forth. Yeah, I have a feeling this bar is, yeah, not very uh, reliable as such. Because the engine is a bit slow. So I'm just going to ignore it for this whole time. Uh, so anyway, Black played uh, G5 which... And I think from a human point of view, nobody would expect a, a move such as g5, just opening up the king. And I'm still not so sure if it's actually a better move than knight d to f6, to be honest. I just don't completely trust it. So after bishop g3, we had f5, and yeah, I think the problem for black is that just long term, he has a lot of uh, kind of weaknesses in his weak king and the weak pawn d5. And I think Komodo exploits that in almost flawless fashion. Where I really like D takes C5 because it just clears the way for your rook to pressure that uh, that pawn. Incidentally, if black did play a move such as B takes C5, what do you think would be a good move for white in reply? I'll give you a minute to, uh, to think about it here. So, okay. The move I think works really well is to play Queen B3. Um, okay, apparently there's some reason it's not meant to be that good. But I'm trying to figure out why exactly it's the case. Um, yeah, it seems to me just a threat of knight to d5 is pretty strong. Just occurred to me actually after knight b6 that maybe knight takes e4 and my idea this doesn't work so well. Because maybe they go c4 and you know, cut off our, our pin to the bishop and yeah, that is going to be a bit unfortunate as such. Uh, where I don't think bishop h7 is working, uh, but we can check it. After king takes, queen to c2. So I'm trying to get some sort of queen g6 at some point. But maybe king g7 is a good reply. And yeah, if we try to keep attacking with bishop e5. I think they just cover it with bishop f6. And it doesn't seem that, uh, not unless we have some tactic. The injury going up and down, it's easy to, to sort of you know, determine these things. But yeah, knight g5 is probably winning. Yeah, we can just play knight e6. I can see what uh, what the whole point is for white uh, you know, behind his previous play. Uh, so, yeah, basically, well, probably black shouldn't go bishop f6. But if you have to go king h6, then yeah, I feel like white gets a bit more playing comparison. You know, maybe you can try knight d4 and get the knight to f5. Or maybe they just play queen d7 and just cover the, uh, the f5 square that way. Uh, so in any case, in the game, we had a, well, it turns out bc5 might not be such a bad move after all. Um, or perhaps we can just play rook fd1 and just await further events. Uh, saying that long term black structure is not so safe anyway. So anyhow, black played knight d takes c5. Uh, white played the bishop to e5. Um, I think it's a very nice positional move actually. We're just able to avoid any problems with f4 and... Our bishop bank will be very good on, on the d4 square. So it's a very uh, precise move, I would say. 
Uh, so we had our rook to c8. And, okay, what do you think is a good positional move for white to play in this case? So, to give a hint, they have an isolated d5 pawn, so what should we do here? Very good, we should indeed play knight to d4. In that way we just blockade that d5 pawn, but we might also kick their knight away with f3 in some positions. So, after bishop f6, I trade off the active bishop. One thing with these positions I find is that uh, basically, well, the more minor pieces get traded, I think the more weak black's king sort of gets as it becomes closer to a uh, queen and uh, rook's position only. At the same time, of course, black would be quite happy to trade queens. That would make his king a lot safer by comparison. And once again, I think, uh, you know, Komodo showed a, a very nice uh, positional understanding. And I think if White were to play moves such as b4, let's say. And then black can sort of take and, uh, and okay, how might black get some counterplay uh, in this position? So, full credit if you recognize this idea of f4, which allows black to you know, maybe open some lines toward the white king and engineer some counterplay that way. So, Komodo's idea is very nice, just to cut out all that business and just play f4. It is true that we are uh, giving this e4 knight an outpost, but I think we'll eventually be able to liquidate it anyway, with knight takes e4 and bishop takes e4. I think the game will show that point very nicely. After g4, white played the move queen d1. Um, I think it's a pretty good move actually, to get out of the way of the, the rook on the c file. Though in fairness, rook fd1 is probably not worse than, uh, than queen to d1 as such. Uh, B after queen d1, the Komodo actually gives white a big advantage already, which might seem a bit surprising, but if you think about it, black doesn't really have a clear plan, and his d5 and f5 pawns are fixed as targets, and his bishop on b7 is simply biting on granite. So I can sort of see why black's position is yeah, not so great here. Now after king to h8, white continued his maneuvering with knight c to e2, just making sure that d4 knight is very well protected and maybe offering some extra strength to the b4 break uh, now that the knight c3 is not under fire. So black played a5 trying to stop the b4 move and I really like the move that uh, Komodo played at this point. It was a, a really nice idea and I'll give you a chance to pause the video to see if you can find it yourself. So the really great idea that Komodo played was knight to g3 which definitely deserves an exclamation mark. Because if you take on g3, I think that this structure is very nice for white. We have this very easy pressure on the f-pawn. I can sort of envisage king f2 and rook h1 later being played, sort of attack down the h-file and make black's king look even more exposed. So black didn't take the knight. Uh, he kept the tension with queen to g6. And white just played a slow improving move. And it's one thing the computers have sort of got better at uh, playing these sort of little uh, improving moves. And yeah, you, know, you might have noticed with my puzzles on Patreon actually that most of my puzzles are not, say, ever you know, white to play and win with a tactic variety, but they're more kind of training your just general ability to find a good move in some you know, general type of position or in a simpler type of position, or perhaps when you have to defend accurately. Because I find those sort of decisions come up more often. Uh, in your games and say the sort of puzzle sort of positions, if that makes sense. And it's also why I like engine games, because I think they show very well just how to play the best moves in a normal type of position. Uh, so the game went uh, rook c8. Okay, at this point, uh, Chiron, Chiron started to realise it was worse, but I don't think it realised just how much worse this was. Maybe it overestimated the value of that e4 outpost, which... It looks nice, but it doesn't really do that much in the grand scheme of things. So, out of interest here, the computer took on e4, but what way do you think white should take? With the bishop or with the knight? So, I think the move that Komodo played is, is the right one, with bishop takes e4. The point is that this knight g3 is doing a very good job of pressuring that f5 pawn, and the bishop on d3 didn't really have a clear target, just sort of hemmed in by the black pawns. So that's why it's, I think it's better to sort of trade it like this. 
Uh, also, if you do play knight take c4, I think you're, you're getting hit with rook c7 or something pretty soon. And if you play f takes, and I can imagine something with f5 being quite unpleasant, for instance. Uh, g4 is under fire and come under more pressure with rook f4. It just looks like a very uh, unsavory sort of position for black. So he tried to keep the structure solid with d take c4. But after a3, we can even kind of say that it doesn't really matter if they play knight d3. Then we can sort of play around the knight and you know, put our queen on c3 or maybe more efficiently on a1 and just have all kinds of nasty threats on that long diagonal. So the game saw rook to d8. Rook c3 was played, just continuing to build up. Also kind of anticipating knight d3 a little bit. Uh, black played rook d7 and... It's sort of one thing you'll notice here, that white really has control of this position. The black's rook and queen are stuck to being the f-pawn. The bishop on b7 has no real scope. And white kind of just has this long-term positional advantage that is uh, very hard for black to resist. And from here it's more or less just a mopping up job for Komodo to uh, convert its, well, what turns out to be an already decisive advantage. So uh, who can tell me what white's threat is in this position? Let's say, for argument's sake, I play a move like uh, bishop a6, for example. What would be the key move for white to obtain a decisive advantage? So, very well done if you found the move knight d takes f5. At least, I was assuming this was a winning move. But apparently there's something a lot better than this. Um, let's try to figure out what the reason would be after bishop takes f1. I'm just playing uh, rook takes c5, I guess. And yeah, it feels like this should just be winning somehow. Maybe with even rook e5 and you know, bring the knight to e7 looks pretty good, for instance. So there's clearly some reason knight d5 doesn't work. Maybe it's because of rook takes f5. Still, you go rook takes c5 check. So as much as I hate to do this, I might have to cheat and see what uh, what the right move is. But ah, king g8, just anticipating rook c5. But my idea is to play rook takes c5 anyway. But of course, black can play b takes c5, and you know, that's not really any good for white. So there's a much better move than knight d takes f5. Maybe I should play rook takes c5 first, because that was my other idea. And if takes, and yeah, just to go for some knight e6 or, or something like that, to uh, go after the rook in this way. Uh, actually, it's a funny line if rook f6, you can still play knight f8. It's a really uh, cute tactic as such. Uh, forking the uh, rook and the queen. But probably the best move is actually just simple chess with rook uh, fc1 and you're not trying to get too flashy with tactics just yet. So anyway, but bishop a6, yeah, for a human point of view, we at least would have to, uh, you know, calculate the variations a little bit. The game black played king to g8 and white was able to just sort of continue getting all the pieces on really good squares here. And after h5, white just continued with b4. Because if black does play knight d3, then I think... Uh, well, I think we don't even have to move this c1 rook. We can probably even play rook c7 and just get right in there with our attack. Uh, where this does look pretty uh, pretty unpleasant for black. I mean, if you play rook to f7 or something, I already feel like there are going to be some tactics connected with knight f5 at some point. Or for that matter, it's probably even possible just to, uh, I was going to say, just to take and move the rook. That's probably also very good for white. Say rook to c4 and, yeah, they do have this problem of how to defend the f5 pawn in this case. So I don't think knight d3 does all that much here. Uh, we had a takes b4 and, and then knight d3 in the game. And yeah, Komodo indeed put the rook on c7. Uh, we can see black just has too many weaknesses. The king is weak, f5 and h5 are weak. You know, black sort of getting hit in the center. It's just all bad news for black. So after queen h7, white just went in rook takes. Rook take, queen takes. And with rook d1, it's sort of a funny point that you don't even have to defend the b-pawn because of you know, tricks with knight takes b4 and, and the knight takes f5 discovered attack on the queen. So the knight's sort of stuck in place for now. And it's all the case that, you know, one good piece, the knight d3 doesn't make your, uh, your whole position good as such. So game continue, rook c8. Queen h5, 
Queen D2 and hey, by this point I think black is basically toast because they're losing either the H pawn or the uh, F pawn. After King H8 and Knight F5, I'll try to remain moves quickly but I think there's not that much more to see. So there's Bishop to D5, Rook came around to E to A1. Um, if you did a blitz game, I'd probably go knight to uh, g3, just to make sure my pieces are all well protected. But rook a1's a good move to uh, give our rook some activity down the a-file. So rook c4 was played, try and create some counterplay. But white's just got everything very well defended. This one iron d4 really does a good job of stopping any enemy counterplay on this solid outpost. There ain't any knight f4 tricks either when you know, a knight can always take back from h5. So after queen f7, white played knight to g3. I uh, had bishop e6. Black's desperately trying to cling on to these weaknesses, but it's all in vain though, where white can also go around and attack the b6 weakness as well. So had king h7, uh, queen d1 is. It's sort of a funny example and proved the worst place piece, that the queen's a one piece not doing much. So if we can sort of get it into the black position, it'll make it much easier for us to win the game. And that's indeed what our Komodo does over the next several moves. First make sure the knights are on very uh, nice sort of posts as such. And then after a few more moves, we've uh, rook to a7. And then why I was looking for a way to bring the queen in. Uh, we well, can probably have a winning ending with queen a1. But Komodo wanted to just keep the pieces on the board and keep black tied up. So I had queen to d6, queen came to a1, uh, just preparing some swap of queens with queen a3 possibly. I had rook to c7, knight g3 just reminds black that you know, he still has that weakness on f5. Uh, king g6 was played. I mean there's probably a lot of winning moves for white, but it's hard to argue with the computer's choice of knight c6. Which opens up ideas of taking and maybe swinging a queen into h8 to good effect. So had rook h7, rook takes and king takes and yeah after queen a7 there's not, not much black can do. And already here uh, you know, the game was over very fast, queen d6. And basically it was adjudicated as a win for white since both the computers had been showing this as being plus 5 or more advantage for white for the last 5 moves. I mean you'll just even be able to play say even queen d4 as a move just to make sure that the queens will not be on the board forever. Uh, so yeah, that was the game between Komodo and Chiron, which uh, well, it also showed my human fallibility with the engine bar going up and down all the time. But yeah, I hope you found the uh, the game instructive, that you learned something from, uh, well, at least from my explanations of the, the computer sort of ideas. Because uh, certainly that idea of how white was able to basically lure Black's pawn sort of forward and then exploit those weaknesses with, you know, if we just go back some moves, uh, yeah, even sort of this idea of bishop e5 and knight d4, I, I really like the way which White just took those outposts that Black gave him. And later on also this kind of decision of, uh, if we just go ahead a few moves, where he sort of played knight g3 and then sort of uh, played bishop e4 and said knight takes find it also a very instructive decision. So yeah, I really like this game. Uh, feel free to share your thoughts on this, uh, whether you'd like me to show any more engine games I found instructive. And yeah, I shall see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye.